Welcome back. My name is Simon Paganini and we continue on the presentation of the dynamic positioning block diagram. In this lecture, I focus on the Kalman filter and the error computation. As uh, discussed in the previous movies of this series, the vessel model acts as an estimator. Due to the collected data, the vessel model can predict a vessel position and heading, which is then compared with the measured data. Because the vessel model can never be a completely accurate representation of the real world, further, even if appropriate thrust to force applied, the counteract of the effect of the measured force on the vessel still tends to move out of position due to forces that are not measured directly, such as waves and sea current, together with any error in the model force and thrust interactions. Therefore, a technique called Kalman filtering is used, named after that guy, Rudolf Emil Kalman. He invented and used the Kalman filter techniques for the first time during the Apollo Moon program. Um, he recently uh, passed away in 2016. Let's see how the Kalman filter works. Normally, to say, the difference between the estimated position and the measured uh, position are put through a Kalman filter, same for the heading, and the vessel model is after it updated and the error of force calculated would be sufficient. But in these days, the dynamic positioning operator is allowed by some DP manufacturer to change settings in the Kalman filter, and therefore we have to go a little deeper into this matter. The measured and validated position and heading are compared with the estimated uh, position and heading. The residual is then sent to the Kalman filter where the Kalman gain will determine how much it will trust the estimate and how much the measurement. All formulas here are simplified. You find more information about extended Kalman filter on the internet. In the first step, we calculate the new estimate for the next calculation circle. The simplified formula would be the old estimate plus the Kalman gain multiplied with the residual, whereas the residual is the measured minus the estimate. Let's make a simple example. Let's say the vessel model estimates a vessel position of 88 meters north of the equator and a position reference system measures 89 meters north. The current gain will now determine how much of the residual, in our example of 1 meter, is being used in the new estimate. If the common gain is 0.5, the new estimate lays half meter away from the old estimate. If the common gain is 0.7, the new estimate is 70 centimeters away from the old estimate, because the common filter believes 70% the measurement and 30% the estimate from the model. Let's put the number in the formula for the new estimate, that is 88 meters north from the old estimate plus the current gain of 0.5 multiplied with the residual which is um, 89 minus, minus 88 equals 88.5 meters north. In the next calculating circle this will be the new estimate. The current gain is calculated based on the error in the measurement and the error in the estimate. So the Kalman gain is equal to the ratio from the errors in the estimate divided through the sum of the error in the estimate plus the error in the measurements. And the number you get are always something between 0 and 1. If the Kalman gain is large, close to 1, that means the measurements uh, we are getting are very accurate while the estimates are unstable. The error in the uncertainties in the estimates are large. And of course, vice versa, if common gain is close to zero, the estimates are stable and the measurements uh, are inaccurate. In this case, we, can, uh, we want to put less weight into the measurements and more weight into the estimate from the vessel model. Therefore, we are um, taking only a very small portion from the calculated residual. Normally, the common gain is getting smaller and smaller, which means we are getting closer and closer to the true value, which means the estimate becomes closer to the true value and then we don't want to get upset with the measured value, which could vary drastically. 
uh, which would have a large uncertainty in it, and then we only would like a small portion of the residual to update the new estimate. That is how we use current gain. If we take a lot of the difference of the measurement and estimate, or just a small amount, depends on the error from these, those two. That's why Kalman filter is such a good tool, because it uses the Kalman gain to figure out how much it trusts the S measurement and how much the estimate. In our example, we have an error in the measurements of 0.8 meters and the error in the estimate of 0.8. So the Kalman gain is 0.8 divided through the sum of 0.8 plus 0.8 gives a Kalman gain of 0.5. The Kalman gain is also responsible that that reckoning works. What's that? If all reference systems um, are completely lost, there is no immediate effect on the position capability of the DP system, because the vessel model will continue to generate uh, position estimates, even though there are no further position measurements. The common gain will go to zero and the vessel stays stationary only based on the estimate. This dead reckoning uh, positioning will initially be very accurate, but uh, will gradually deteriorate over time. Back to calculations. The only thing left to do is to calculate the error of the estimate for the next calculation circle. The formula is 1 minus common gain multiplied with the last error in the estimate. In our example, 1 minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.8, that's equal 0 0.4 meters. This, this is the error in the estimate for the next calculation circle. The error in the measurements are not changing so much, but they also need to be calculated for the current gain. Now we have the new estimate, which is in our example half meter away from the old estimate, position of 88.5 meters north. And not, not like uh, with the last estimate, 88 meters north. Now the vessel has a problem because some unknown force, or better some not measured force, push the vessel half a meter of position. That could be from wave, sea current, error in the model or thrust interactions. The vessel compute now in which direction the vessel was pushed and because it knows the direction and the distance and how long a calculation circle took, it then also knows the speed in which the vessel was drifting off position. With those data, the DP system can take the coefficients from the current table and calculate with square of the drift speed divided to 9.81, the error force, which acts on the vessel. Because the, key, uh, the table is uh, in kilonewton, to get to tons we have to divide it to 9.81. The table works the same as the wind model, just with other coefficients. The calculated error force is then put through a low pass filter with a long filter time. As an example, the filter constant is around half an hour with the Konsberg TP system or only 12 minutes with Alstom. I explained in the wind lecture how a low pass filter works if you're not sure anymore. The output from the filter, the error force, also called current, is then like the wind force feed forward as an external force to the actuator, means first the thrust to allocation with a huge delay due to the long filter time. If you look closer what the DP system is doing with the data from the position reference system and the estimate in the current filter, something is completely ignored. And what's that? Okay, let's see what data the current filter is using. That's the estimated position and the heading with the error in the estimate and the measure position and heading with the error in the measurements. With both errors in the estimate and measurements, the common gain is calculated. Now, may you already saw it. The set point of the position and heading input from the dynamic positioning operator and therefore the offset between the estimate and the set point is completely ignored. The Kalman filtering is only looking at the estimate and the measurements and not at the set points. For that, the controller will take care of the set point and offset. See the lecture about the controller if you're interested in it. Now, for most TPO, that's all what you need to know. However, 
there is a one small thing which only very few of you are able to change. I'm talking about changing the common game. If unmeasured forces acting on a vessel that change rapidly, which may affect the positioning, the TPO can now use a so-called quick model with Kongsberg or an environmental force fast learn in Astrum to optimize the station keeping. There are two ways where this function can act. Depends on your manufacturer. First, the easiest way for software programmer is to change the temporary the filter time on the low pass filter, resulting in a quicker fast forward of the last error force to the thrust allocation. This is not my favorite because it can make the system nervous and the new estimates are not influenced with such solution. Means it works on the symptoms but not on the source. Therefore, I prefer the second way, which is to increase the carrying gain temporarily, resulting in a short in integration time for the residual force. The current filter will take more data from the measurement, since we are aware that the model is not accurate due to the rapidly changing force. Now, there are special DP operation modes where during this operation the vessel will encounter lots of rapidly changing forces which cannot be measured, like for example in ultra heavy lift with the topside lift system or deep operation in the Arctic with heavy ice. The DP manufacturer had now a problem because the traditional way of calculating the error force, like I explained before, uh, was not working anymore. As a matter of fact, the sea current is the main component of the unknown, not measured force acting on the vessel. And under normal condition, these error force are changing very slow. Now we could say, uh, let's the vessel operate with the constant, the quick model on, with an increased calming gain. Unfortunately, that is only possible in very limited amounts, because the increased range is very small. That is because if we increase the current gain too high, the current speed can get noisy due to the reduced integration time and ramp up and down the speed rapidly. And as we know from the formula, the current speed is squared, means only a very small change of the current speed introduces a significant change in the error force, which makes the DP response very unstable. To be, uh, to be able to make the DP system acting more rapidly to the J unknown external forces, while avoiding instable DP behavior, a new estimator for the residual force has been developed. It is referred as error force estimator. Instead of calculating a current, the residual force are calculated directly as an additional force demand. And the trick is, the force demand is linear. In this way, a larger calming gain can be used without making the system instable. A DPO changing the calming gain need to be very aware that from the time when you increase the calming gain, and respectively using this function during a special DP operation mode, more embassy is put on the measurements. Therefore, a problem in the position reference system will have straight a huge impact on the station, capi uh, station keeping capability compared with the traditional DP current model calculator. So in our previous example with the residual of 1 meter, uh, the common gain is increased, let's say, to 0 0.8. So the new estimate is then 0 0.8 meters away from the old estimate. And since the error force estimate is used linear, let's say 4 tons per meter offset, uh, 3.2 tons error force is applied. 4 tons multiplied by 0 0.8 equals 3.2 tons. Our feed forwards to the thrust allocation. Feed out the filter and therefore without delay. The vessel reacts promptly. The DP manufacturer still put the safety uh, into the system. The DPO can only change the Kalman gain in a range plus minus of the Kalman gain. That's because otherwise, if somebody would put it to zero, the vessel would straight be in dead reckoning mode because the input from the measurement would be completely ignored. And vice versa, 
would also make the vessel very nervous because um, of, of uh, this problem some manufacturers changed their approach and let the carbon gain increased on a fixed level above the calculated carbon gain like a constant quick model just higher and the operator can change the level of tons applied per hour offset in the linear error force estimator. They call it error force gain. Let's say like in our example uh, the error force gain is uh, 4 tons per meter offset if the error force gain is high, it would be 6 tons per meter offset. If it's low, 2 tons. So the operator can adjust the error force gain in this range as example. Like I said before, most vessels, the TPO cannot change the carbon gain. And if so, then only if during a DP special operation mode are used, where rapidly changing not measured forces are present. All right. That's for now. Thanks for watching. Now you know hopefully more about the carbon filter and the error computation. See you next time. Bye.